it has a massive, a, an enormous impact on economies, even in, in, in well-developed countries, such as the United States and Europe. Uh, billions and upon billions of dollars are spent not only in public security, prisons, police, courts, uh, but even larger amounts of, of money are, are spent by people um, doing things to protect themselves, like putting alarm systems in their house and, and, and such things. While there is some uh, evidence, reason, good evidence, that very short uh, punishments are an effective deterrent. Um, but most studies find that increasing already long sentences has very, very small or no deterrent effects. And so what I mean by that is that when we ask the question, um, does a 20-year sentence for armed robbery deter? That's really not the right way of thinking about it. The right way of thinking about it is, is 20 years better than some acceptable alternative, let's say, like 10 years? And the evidence is that those, kind, increment, those kinds of incremental changes in already severe punishments uh, do not have a material deterrent effect. It's important to frame it in, in terms of the alternative. And the, and the alternative to the death penalty is a, a lengthy prison term in the United States, often life without parole. And so the right question is, does the death penalty deter relative compared to those alternative punishments? And there are good reasons to be skeptical about whether there's an incremental deterrent effect. Early childhood interventions of the sort of making, trying to make sure that mothers get proper prenatal care. And for women uh, who need help, uh, help in how to best raise a child. That these uh, kinds of pro programs have enormous dividends for, subsequently for the child in terms of not only their performance, you know, you know academically and so forth, but very importantly, um, that they're, they are less crime prone. And so, that there are, long, there are substantial long-term benefits um, in terms of crime prevention from these programs. I think it, there it depends on what, what kind of crime we're talking about. Um, the poor are, um, are more prone to committing crimes like robbery, burglary, and, 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 and so forth um, that, like that. But there are other types of, if we're reminded of the financial scandals of Bernie Madoff uh, in the United States and uh, of various kinds of white collar crime, there are other kinds of crimes that uh, the poor just simply because of their station in life don't even have an opportunity to commit. I think that the, some of the, the programs that are emphasized in the CAF report are, are, the, are the conceptually the right programs. That is, programs that uh, involving early childhood intervention, uh, programs that focus on making more effective use of the police. Um, uh, I am confident would also would pay dividends in Latin America as they have paid dividends in, more, in developed countries like the US and Western Europe. But what I would say is that, um, is that these programs need to be designed and tested in the Latin American context. Uh, these are, um, the, the research on the preventive effects of the police is mostly in, in developed countries, um, as are these early childhood intervention programs. I think there are good reasons to think that they will also be effective in, uh, in, in, in Latin America. But I, th I think it's also the case that it's important that they be adapted and uh, adapted to the Latin American context and culture and, and so forth and tested.